Hello, everyone. I am Matthew Thomas. This is Super Cool Radio. I've got a very special guest with me at this time. She's the lead vocalist for Los Angeles based band Edge of Paradise, and they released a brand new album entitled The Unknown on September 17th. Please welcome Margarita Monette. Thank you for hanging out with me. Ah, thank you for having me. So, how are you doing? I see you're outside enjoying the uh, nice weather. Uh, it's way too hot. <laughs> just, I don't know why I'm wearing a jacket, but it's like 100 degrees out in LA. So, but it's nice. It's always sunny. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's unusually cool for uh, for July for us. It's like 65 degrees right now. That's, that's cool. I, I envy you guys <laughs> right now. We had some nice summers until the snow comes in like October or November, and then we're buried in snow for four months so or more. So other than that, it's totally nice. Very cool. And so uh, I know we had a lot to discuss on the new album and all that stuff, but I want to kick this interview off with a fun question. Uh, what music have you been listening to this week? <laughs> Our music? <laughs> Just because we're so immersed in it right now. Uh, but... Um, I do love Ramstein. I like uh, Within Temptation. I do. Actually, I was listening to some uh, Iron Maiden this week. Nice. I have a vast genre that I listen to. Yeah, for sure. That's, I mean, that's awesome with all the music and bands and genres. It's it's always nice to explore different stuff and uh, listen. You know, the mood. You know, the mood really. To, uh, changes depending on the music music and stuff so really it just depends yeah definitely. do you listen to like uh like when you're about to release an album like the unknown coming out in september do you listen to your music more to make sure like does it sound right is it mixed right is this what i want like do you listen to it more uh well that happens before everything is done so right now it's more because you know we're reposting stuff we're in promotion mode so we we hear it whether we like it or not but we're really proud of this music so um yeah i mean this the process of making the album was over a year so um until every song is complete we you know it's definitely the whole team like 20 people listening to it making sure it's right yeah, gosh, and definitely, I do want to discuss uh, the upcoming album. But first, so how did Edge of Paradise get started as a band? Because I've heard this is now your 10th uh, year as a band. Yeah, it, you know, it happened kind of by chance because I never really looked to have a band or, you know, be a singer. Um, I played piano my whole life and I was in theater. But when I moved to L.A. from New York, I met Dave Bates kind of by chance and uh, he had a band before and they kind of all went on tour so um i i always wanted to create something of my own you know and not rely on anybody it's kind of like be the master of my own destiny in a way so our visions kind of aligned and we had similar work ethics so you know we just started the band and dave is more from a heavy metal background and i'm from like classical theater background so it took us a while to figure out how to mend our styles together um but you know i love what i do just because i do everything that i love to do my whole, like you know performing music art um making videos so it's like everything's combined <laughs> yeah it's really awesome and definitely i really like the the sound you guys are going with like from universe and now the first couple singles for the unknown i really like the direction you guys are heading Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really fun. I love this kind of sci-fi exploring, you know, the unknown. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Just all the different elements you guys use, especially like for your music videos. They're always very uh, intricate with like different scenes and stuff and all the, um, it really just fits like the music because like yeah. your music, it's very unique. It's got like the, the keys, but also you got like the killer guitar solos in there. So it's a nice like blend of uh, like rock and metal music. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's that's a big compliment to us because we all always want to make something unique, but also keep the, you know, what, what people like. So it's still relatable and accessible, but still unique in, in a way that's you know, unique to us. So. Yeah, for sure. Anytime I hear Edge of Paradise song, I already, already within like the first probably couple, like 10 seconds or so, I already know like this sounds like Edge of Paradise. And oh, that's super cool. See, that's like the biggest compliment to us, though. 
thank you. Yeah, for sure. And definitely, like, I really like um, when I started listening to you guys, it's just like the, just kind of the different, uh, uh, the way, the way you guys go, like, different, like, the different um, ideas you guys express, like, throughout the music, because it's kind of, it's very uh, different with, like, the, um, the ideas and stuff you guys uh, express in the music. Yeah, I kind of like pushing the boundaries in a way. Um, it's almost like I'm making this reality <laughs> to, to exist in, you know, that's kind of bigger than this world. And, um, you know, we want people to be a part of our world and, you know, we explore all kinds of themes. So it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. It definitely sounds like, uh, sounds like it. And I know, so right now there's two uh, singles out for The Unknown, that is Digital Paradise, which was the first one, and awesome one you guys just released, I believe this week actually, uh, My Method, Your Madness. Uh, yeah. So I, I want to discuss both of those. Uh, so the first one, Digital Paradise, which I really enjoy because it's also like, it's, it's metal, it's heavy, but it's also very catchy and like has a little bit of a pop influence in there as well with like the lyric writing and all that. So like, how was it writing? Digital Paradise. Um, you know, Digital Paradise was actually one of, the, one of the first ideas for me when we started to make the album, and it was it was a little different. I made the music first to the chorus, and it was called Lifetimes, and it was just about kind of exploring what it's like to live forever, you know, about living forever. And then when Dave uh, started working on it and put heavy guitars, I put more electronic elements in it and it evolved into this digital um, theme more. So then it was about how maybe with the help of technology, evolution of technology, maybe we could exist for forever, but would it actually be us, you know? So it's kind of exploring that um, question. And, uh, you know, writing a song, once, for us, once we kind of have an idea, things fall into place and we just, follow the music, you know, let the music guide us. And um, I think the pop element or the catchy elements is, um, it's, you know, I th maybe it comes from my background just because I love, I love the catchy melodies, you know, I kind of grew up listening to, um, I, I don't know how to explain it, you know, like I didn't grow up listening to certain things. So like I didn't grow up listening to metal. Um, so maybe subconsciously, <laughs> I don't know. Some people, I know some like, you know, the most hateful comments we get is like, she's Britney Spears of metal. <laughs> I don't think I am, but I guess it's not really a bad thing. <laughs> No, I, I wouldn't really make that uh, association between that. But no, it just like it makes a song very memorable, I guess. Maybe not necessarily like like pop influence, but it's very memorable because like I listened to it the first couple of times, and then like later in the day, it was kind of stuck in my head, kind of thing. <laughs> that's cool. That's that's what we want because we want you to remember the song and sing along at the show. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely, uh, I've not seen you guys live, but hopefully whenever that does happen, that uh, I definitely am looking forward to uh, listening to Digital Paradise, or hearing Par this Digital Paradise live, because I know it's going to be awesome. I'm dying to play a show because we haven't played this show in like two years. <laughs> so, this pandemic, man, it really, you know, screwed up a lot of things. So we're going to tour US and go back to Europe, do more Japan and but I mean, you know, we got a new album out of it, so I guess it's not all bad. There's always a silver lining with stuff like that. But did the pandemic, like in in a way, allow you to focus more on the album and the art and uh, the music and stuff like that? Yeah, I mean, that's all we did because uh, we couldn't do much of anything else, <laughs> you know. But it it also, in a way, kind of inspired me to think, um, you know a little bit outside the boundaries because it's such a you know nobody really expected this pandemic to happen these days so it makes me think and also when we were recorded when we went back to the studio with our producer mike plotnikov and we had neil from three days graces up in canada he was zooming in to the session um 
but we all really like to talk about all kinds of things. We talked about every conspiracy theory. We talked about all kinds of like otherworldly stuff and, you know, pushing the boundaries of reality. So uh, the songs kind of <laughs> evolved from there, but it was, it was really fun. And then, you know, of course it was, you know, there was a lot of fear, a yeah. lot, not necessarily with us, but because you you don't really know what's happening, you don't know what's gonna happen. So there's that fear in the back of your mind, and that's kind of where the unknown song came from. Is find strength in the unknown. So instead of uh, giving into the fear, you kind of put a spin on it and you know find strength in it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, for sure, and definitely, I think a lot of people uh, can uh, relate to that song just because it comes from a very real place. Of last year, there was a lot of unknown, even kind of into this year as well. That there's still unknowns, but uh, to overcome that fear and to uh, to be strong with everything, I think it's definitely very relatable. Yeah, and it, you know, it, you can um, all the songs that uh, you know the lyrics I make. I try to like all the songs are set in this larger than life setting, but you can really apply it to the real world, and it's very personal. So that song, you know, it, it can be interpreted that way. Um, I think you know, I also interpret it more as the unknown. You know, what's beyond this life? What's you know, <laughs> thinking in terms of that as well and um, just you know not being afraid of what we don't know because you know humans we don't know much so. that, yes that is very true there's so much that we we're still like discovering every day like you know sp you know outer space even like with stuff like with with that we're still discovering new stuff and uh you know obviously uh, spiritually what happens after us after we pass away and so there's so many like unknown questions that we probably never will know uh all the meanings and uh, everything after all that. Yeah, exactly. So you did touch on the title track "Unknown." I've heard that is going to be the third single for for the unknown. Uh, can you give a little bit of hints, like what people can expect from the unknown? Yeah, so that's the, the, obviously the title track and the music video. Um, it's probably the most epic one so far. We went on location and. It, you know, we try to capture like it's another world. We love, we love making crazy videos, uh, but it's definitely the most meaningful, most emotional, most dynamic uh, song. Uh, to me, it's my favorite off the album just because of what it means to me. Um, I remember what it was like recording it and just how much what went into making that song. And also, you know, to me, it's like one songs you make once in a lifetime where it really um, holds like a piece of your soul in it you know so I'm really excited for people to hear it yeah I'm definitely very excited to hear especially the, the way you described it so I'm definitely looking forward to that even like just the, the first two singles like I've, I've really enjoyed it because again I think it's a continuation from the the sound that was on the universe but I think you guys are definitely adding more elements to it you guys I love the two music videos you guys put out I really like the, the costumes and the locations and scenes and all the imagery. You guys are really like, I think, step in love, obviously with the production and stuff, but definitely just the the ideas too. They're just like coming out in the music videos that are represented in the songs. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, we try, you know, with every video, we try to kind of step it up. And, you know, so the bigger the band gets, I really want to, you know, do even more and with stage production as well. Um, but it's funny because when people sometimes ask me to explain these songs, I say, you know, if you know movies like Interstellar or Inception, I try to make a song be like a mini movie like that because, you know, I love all that stuff. When I first listened to Digital Paradise, like, I said, this fits in with like the sci-fi movie because you're like the, the yeah. beginning part of it. Like that sounds like a total like action scene from a sci-fi movie. And even like the, the ending part as well, it just, it just fits so well with like the, uh, sci-fi imagery is like when you listen to it oh cool thank you love hearing that <laughs> so. yeah for sure but also the uh the second single uh my method your madness which was uh, recently released uh i love the music video for it because i really like the obviously you got the different artistic scenes in there you, got, you guys jamming on a rooftop i believe it looks like in la i assume mm -hmm. so uh yeah. how, was it, how was it filming that music video 
Uh, yeah, that one, you know, Digital Paradise was much bigger production. Um, and so we filmed The Unknown first and we filmed Digital Paradise. Then Madness was a little bit of a smaller production. I actually edited that video myself, but we had a great uh, cam, um, you know, camera operator. And he's also a filmmaker, Dane Mallon, and he's from South Africa. So he, I really loved how he captured the band, like the, the way he filmed it, really fit the song. Um, and then uh, we had Dresden Seven who filmed the other scenes, not the rooftop scenes, but the other ones. So those scenes were kind of meant to um, be sort of like the, the other dimensions or the other reality of the same person, you know, because the song is about how, you know, exploring whether, you know, our choices can echo through different timelines or you know whether we exist in multiple realities or you know if anything matters or doesn't matter just kind of exploring those themes because you see um a common you know symbol on my hand <laughs> throughout all these dimensions so yeah it's a fun video we do a lot of performance videos but they are kind of you know, we really play up the imagery and try to create a world around the performances. So. Yeah, definitely. I think that the music video uh, for that single, I think it really captures you guys. I think like the live show also <laughs> within the music video with you guys jamming, but also the uh, the idea of like all the different dimensions. Is there different dimensions? Do you exist in uh, other uh, universes and stuff? I think it's really cool. I think that's like been on an idea that people have thought of, you know, probably for many years, um, you know, going back with everything. So I think it's really cool, but uh, how do you, uh, where do you find inspiration like for all these different, um, you know, the, obviously in the writings and all the ideas, like how do you find inspiration for that? <laughs> I don't know, maybe thinking about how to escape this reality. <laughs> Think of a, another kind of a larger than, I don't know, I always kind of wanted to, figure uh, find something more like whether something more exists to what we know so it, it always interested me and also my dad is a scientist so i kind of like that science fiction or just kind of reading about the new discoveries because we learn something every day and i like also learning about human brain it's it always fascinated me you know neurosurgeons the more they know about the brain, the less they know about it, because it's it's still so mysterious. And um, I just love exploring mystery. And, um, you know, that's what I draw inspiration from. Yeah, that's really awesome. Especially like, as you said, the, the brain, it's, there's so many, you know, intricate moving parts that we, again, it's something that we might not never ever know the answer, of like how it fully works and like how everything uh actually like, is intricate and uh, working so it's also very cool uh like i'm i'm a huge fan of if you know with the tv show uh, the twilight zone oh yeah uh, yeah that's i uh, that's it kind of like fits in that same kind of at least to me like that same kind of like reality of like the twilight zone like pushing you know obviously pushing the, the uh, boundaries and like uh really making you think that's kind of what i get when i listen to edge of paradise yeah exactly and you know what's interesting is so digital paradise it's partly about you know uploading your mind into a computer and then figuring out if your soul kind of got transferred or whether there is a soul or is it just a digital copy of yourself but um i remember reading because you know there's a lot of research in that whether we can upload our consciousness <laughs> sounds so crazy right but it's it's a re it's reality i right already mapped a brain of a fly and uploaded it to a computer so if you want to like google it it's really fascinating but a brain of a fly it's like you know takes three years, yeah. years it's just like insane so technically it's possible to upload a human brain but it you know currently obviously we don't have technology to do that or capacity to do that but it's just really fascinating how it might be possible in the future and what that entails and I, I always like to ask people what they think about it and some people people are very divided some people are like no way that's not happening <laughs> some people are like yeah upload me right up <laughs> you know? so it's kind of interesting to stir these thoughts yeah it definitely is i was i was not aware of uh of that actually of they're actually able to accomplish that so that, i mean that's kind of it's cool for like a technology standpoint 
for like me on a personal level, I'm good. You don't need to upload my brand. I, I, I'm fine. <laughs> but the possibility of that I think is really awesome. It just shows how much my technology has progressed. I know I saw uh, a study, I think it was a couple of years ago, that they were trying to like um, 3D print uh, human organs. And uh, for like, instead of having to transfer your organ, you can make one so there wouldn't be a shortage. And I thought that was really cool. Yeah, I think they already do that. Oh, they do. Yeah. Nice. My, I'm out of the loop when it comes to stuff like that. But it, it, again, you know, technology uh, progressing. It, I think that's really awesome that it can uh, help out other people without having to take uh, organs from other people. Because you know, obviously, with everything that involved in that, but I think that's really cool. It's super cool, yeah, and it just makes you think of how the future is going to be, and then the problems that would arise with that. Because I'm sure there's going to be a lot. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. There's going to be something to look forward to, but as you said, obviously there has to be some type of, uh, obviously there, there's going to be problems that arise from that, either from, you know, morally or just you don't want to do it or stuff like that. So, and also like there's some people who want to live for other, forever and there's some people who don't because obviously there's, you know, difference of opinions with that. But I think it's definitely something I think people should definitely think about and explore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I think you like again call back to the Twilight Zone, like uh, the guy he he wanted to live forever, and then he wound up uh, he he uh, he's like, oh, I can live forever. So like, he, I think he he beat up somebody, like he killed somebody, and then he got life in prison. So he lives forever, but he's got life in prison. So yeah, there's always was... a fine line with that stuff. Yeah, that that's that's like hell, probably right. So crazy. Yeah, for sure. But uh, so um, obviously get, get back. So the the album unknown it drops September seventeenth. So obviously we talked about a few of the singles that are going to be coming out or, the, or already out. So what's like the whole like um, the vibe and theme of the album, if you can sum it up? Yeah, I'm. I guess that's kind of the vibe. It's it's kind of blurring the reality of you know this reality and where our future of technology could take us and whether there is possibility of merging the human brain and machine. Uh, but it's also about, you know, finding your you know, strength in the unknown. That's kind of, you know, I think the line that kind of summarizes the album is inside the silence of my mind, I find the strength in the unknown. So whether you can, whether you think of just overcoming something or being afraid of something or being afraid this future or anything it's kind of going back within yourself and choosing to approach it in a different way that doesn't involve fear so i think that's kind of the you know because i always want to put an empowering message to the songs to the album even though it does explore these crazy ideas and uh, you know theories or themes but really bring it back to you know uh this personal um, you know, personal I, message to empower people in some way and bring some light to someone's day, you know? <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I really like that because, I mean, the music, I think, does, it's very thought-provoking, even, even just for yourself or, like, the universe or, like, just what is going on. But, yeah, definitely the, the message, you know, obviously of uh, uh, uplifting messages, you know, in the music and stuff, but also I think it's very thought-provoking and almost um, reflective as well in some portions. Yeah. yeah. It'd be very cool. I know you got uh, you got a lot of bundles, and obviously you can pre-order it. So definitely check that out. I'll leave some links in the description for uh, Edge, Edge of Paradise merchandise if you want to check that out. But uh, definitely check out the new singles as well. I really enjoy them. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we tried to make this um, album release really special because it is also ten year anniversary. So I'm making paintings for each song and we're going to have really cool bundles. Actually, the album bundle is coming out this week. We're going to have the Madness bundle first because of the single that came out. So that will include the painting of the song and the t-shirt and album, of course. And then when the unknown comes up, we'll have the official album bundles and it'll have really cool items in there. Um, some items are featured in the music videos. So we want to make something really, you know, really cool and exciting for the people. 
that's definitely very awesome, especially like for, you know, 10 years, obviously it's a mile marker for really anything you do, especially being in music. But I think that is, it's really awesome. So uh, the paintings, are those hand painted by you? Yeah, I hand painted them. And, you know, over the years, people found interest in my art and I actually sold a lot of these hand painted paintings. Uh, but for these ones, I am painting them, but since, you know, it's one of each, um, I'm doing canvas prints of the paintings. And then for the unknown, I'm actually going to give away the original painting of that single. Um, but the original paintings of the other first, the first two singles went to our producers. <laughs> so they have the original. But yeah, it's kind of fun. It's really cool to incorporate like visual uh, elements, obviously, to go along with the audio portion of music. But I think that that's really awesome because obviously you guys prov uh, provoke in the music a lot of visual ideas as well. Yeah, so that's why I can't wait to play shows too. <laughs> so we can bring it, you know, all across the world, hopefully soon. I hope so too. It seems like stuff is definitely, uh, I think, uh, changing and opening up a little bit. So I do hope, uh, hope to see you guys live because I've heard you guys really deliver an awesome show, especially with two years off. I think you guys are going to uh, bring it 110%. Oh, yeah, definitely. But, so this is obviously 10 years of Edge of Paradise. So like going back 10 years, did you think you like, if you talk to yourself 10 years ago, do you think you could have gotten this far was that even like a possibility for where you guys are now you know i always strive for the stars <laughs> i um uh, and i don't really think about you know to where we can get or in that term but i always try to do more whether and to you know make our music better make our videos better make it make everything larger and uh you know the band grows that's kind of the um you know byproduct of putting in the work and really growing as a band so of course we hope to you know have success with the music just because it will mean that the music means a lot to the people and we really want our music to mean a lot to people and kind of leave the legacy and create something that can stand the uh, test of time you know so I always think in that way um, but yeah I mean we want to keep making albums we want to keep touring you know keep doing more and keep creating so that's the goal yeah it's definitely it's really awesome like I, I just think back since like when I started my show it's like man I didn't like you don't really think too much about like um, like you just want to like do, you know obviously just do it and get uh, you know be creative with stuff but like man I've Kind of looking back like oh i've done this done this done this kind of thing especially like 10 years that is uh as i said a big uh, milestone for uh for anyone really an artist or artist or career or anything it, it's a big milestone yeah thank you and um you have a really cool name on your show you snagged that one <laughs> so it's good <laughs> I, did. I i had to think of like i had a i had a note paper and like i was kept thinking of different names like oh that one's taken ah oh, that one's taken that one's too close to this one so like i just had to keep coming up with different <laughs> stuff and it's like it's finally super cool radio and it finally hey no one no one's using it okay i have it now so yeah. it just it just came to me uh, i think i was just talking to a friend he's like you know be how about cool radio and i was like that's, cool radio. that's kind of cool but how about like super cool super radio cool. yeah that's awesome so yeah, just uh, it's kind of funny how just stuff just you know the normal conversation or you just think of an idea and then just roll with it and then here we are now kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's, and it's also about following through, you know, because over the years we've seen a lot of bands give up because there's a lot of obstacles and it's very hard. But you can't, you know, if if you're passionate about something, you just kind of got to keep going. Um, yeah, because I never want to live with regret or think what if or just, you know, <laughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather, you know, really push through and uh, learn from the hard times, but never have that regret that what if I tried harder or some, you know, something like that. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. I'd rather uh, try to follow through on something and be like, oh, I wish I could have done that 
because you never know like you know obviously stuff's a struggle i i kind of i feel with you know bands and stuff about like having to obviously you have to market yourself you have to promote yourself you have to create the content and music so it's definitely it's not easy but like I, i'd rather uh get through the get through everything than saying well i didn't <laughs> yeah yeah exactly for sure and uh, so i got i got another cool question for you uh if you could collaborate with one living artist on a future song who would it be yeah, there's a lot of cool uh, really cool artists out there you know for me i think it would be really cool to collaborate with like film composers for example clint mansell or hans zimmer um i always hear you know the soundtracks and i kind of get ideas of melodies or like words so it'll be really interesting and I, I also i always wanted to kind of incorporate a, like an orchestra in our songs so i think that would be really fun that would be really awesome i know i, I know a few bands who've done like an orchestra like with them for a live show i think it, like with edge of paradise i think there's so many different possibilities with where your music could go that almost like any genre would work with you guys Oh, cool. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be fun. And then it's a big compliment because, you know, we, I never wanted to narrow ourselves to a certain thing. I just wanted to be about the songs and about the message and just so people enjoy the music, you know, and uh, of all genres. So it's kind of accessible to everyone. So it's really cool to hear. Yeah, for sure. But definitely, you guys in an orchestra, I think that would be awesome. Like, if you guys can make that happen, I would, I would love it. <laughs> Me too. Hopefully, one day. I, when you guys return to live shows, I mean, if Alter Bridge can do it, I'm pretty sure you guys can too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just gotta, you know, hopefully this, you know, we'll keep pushing this album, and maybe we'll be able to bring a whole orchestra with us. So. <laughs> I mean, that would be really a lot of moving pieces with the traveling orchestra with you guys. But definitely, I mean. The music would sound awesome. I can guarantee that. Yeah, yeah. I think Muse had an or you know, obviously a lot of bands did that. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a possibility, something that we would love to. So it, you know, it's in our future. It just depends when when we can make it happen. But it's been yeah. crazier things, you know. We want. It's like, I remember us being like, let's film a video in Iceland. And we're like how can we even get there <laughs> then all of a sudden we're in iceland so you know you never know you just gotta keep pushing forward definitely for sure i know uh, i know iceland's better than greenland i do know that even though the names <laughs> they, they push names but uh i didn't know you guys filmed in iceland i think that would be a very unique experience i would say yeah you know the story behind it is that um, people the people that lived in iceland they didn't want any settlers or any foreigners coming so they called it iceland and now the greenland so you know nobody wanted to come to iceland obviously because it's all ice so kind of a trick there but uh, yeah we filmed face of fear which is on our last album universe and uh, yeah it was incredible because it's such a weird landscape because there's not tr no no, no trees at all, I don't, because it's all, it's all rocky and there's moss everywhere, like super soft moss, but the rock formations are just like another planet and there's like hardly any people live there. So we were like blasting on a glacier and only birds were probably listening to us, but it's so cool because it's just so vast and, and it looks like you're, you're in a Star Wars movie. I think they actually filmed a lot of it in Iceland. So. That's, that's very cool, especially like uh, just being just very isolated that you could do like pretty much anything without having to worry about, you know, obviously other than disturbing a few birds and stuff like that, that you, uh, you could do a lot of different things. But yeah, definitely really cool. I have not checked out that video, actually. I would definitely, I'm going to have to. Yeah, it's for a song called Face of Fear. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna check it out uh, later today when I'm uh, get finished with this. But definitely, that's really awesome. Especially just again all the possibilities of just like, hey, let's film in Iceland, and now, hey, we're filming in Iceland, kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, that's really awesome. Definitely, as I said, the unknown drops September 17th. I got some great bundles. They'll be announcing some more great bundles for my method of madness. So be on the lookout for that. Also, get some uh, digital prints of uh, paintings and stuff like that. So that'd be really awesome. 
But uh, so how are you going to close out the rest of this year? After you got the new album dropping, but uh, any kind of other plans to close out 2021? Well, we're going to have a guitar giveaway starting July 30th when our album, when the title track comes out. So keep an eye for that. We, we always do guitar giveaways around the releases. And um, I actually painted the guitar of our last winner, Chris. He's out in Germany and he still uses it. He's actually also in the band. So it's, it's fun. So keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, and I, you know, I just also want to thank people for listening to us or new, new people. We want to welcome you to our world and just really excited to hopefully we'll meet everybody at shows in the near future. We're very social band. We love meeting people. We love talking to you online. We just love creating the world and getting to know everybody in it. So. Yeah, it's really awesome. Please check out Stream Support. Give a like to Edge of Paradise. Be on the lookout for the guitar giveaway. I know the guitar is going to look awesome. So check that out July 30th. But thank you so much, Margarita Monet, the vocalist of Edge of Paradise. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Thank you. It's been really fun. Thank you for having me. Of course, thank you everyone for watching Super Cool Radio. I'm your host as always, Matthew Thomas. Keep on rocking.